Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do pretty much the same problems we did yesterday, but we're going to approach them without the graph in front of us, which is a good bit more difficult. So before we get started, let's review what we did yesterday. For bell work on your own paper somewhere, please write down your answers to, to these four problems based on yesterday's lesson. So hit pause. Okay, so at negative 1, there appears to be a vertical asymptote, okay? So as you approach a vertical asymptote, as your graph approaches that asymptote, it's either going to go up to infinity or down to negative infinity. Well, for this one, as we approach negative 1 from the left, it goes up to infinity. And as we approach negative 1 from the right, it goes down to negative infinity. Now, I want you to try to remember this. As you approach a vertical asymptote, which there's a vertical asymptote at negative 1, because this denominator can't be 0. As you approach a vertical asymptote, if I ask you the limit as you're approaching an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, the answer has to be infinity or negative infinity. Okay, don't forget that. And the key is knowing when a vertical asymptote occurs. And that's when you have division by zero, but the factor doesn't cancel with another factor on top. Okay, that's going to be coming up in the, it, later on in the lesson. All right, now as x approaches positive infinity, there's another asymptote. This one's a horizontal asymptote here. At 2, it's a little shy, but that's what it was supposed to be at. So as x approaches positive infinity, my height appears to go to 2. And as x approaches negative infinity, my height also appears to go to 2. So try to also keep in mind that if there's a limit at infinity or a limit at negative infinity, Okay, those two questions, if you get an answer to that other than infinite, then that means you actually have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we're going to be approaching those two problems today, or those two types of problems today, algebraically, without the benefit of the pretty graph, which makes it so easy. So here we go. Let's start with those vertical asymptotes. Okay, so that same exact problem. If I gave you the problem without the graph, you go to plug in the negative 1. Remember, you always start by just trying to plug it in. Even if it says from the left, you still just try to plug it in. So I try to plug in a negative 1, and I get division of 0, and I can't cancel to make it go away. If it doesn't cancel, and it's still there, then it's a vertical asymptote. I say this, if it does cancel, something like this, if I had had this, okay, if I had that, then there would be a hole at negative 1. If it doesn't cancel and it's still there, it's a stubborn pain in your asymptote. Ha, ah, you get it? Stubborn pain in your asymptote doesn't go away. If it doesn't cancel, then it's an asymptote at negative 1. This would be a hole at negative 1. This is an asymptote at negative 1. Okay, so back to the question. I try to plug in this negative 1, and I can't because there's an asymptote. As soon as you know you have a vertical asymptote, you also know that as you're approaching this asymptote, your graph's either going to go up to infinity or down to negative infinity. I just have to figure out which one it is. So we know automatically that both of these answers are one of these two. Now all I need to do is figure out which one it is. Okay, so let me clean this up a little. So now I just need to figure out whether it's actually a positive infinity or a negative infinity because I know it's definitely one of those since we are approaching a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we're going to kind of cheat. Really all I need to do is plug in a number super close to negative 1 but to the left of it. What is a number super close to negative 1 but to the left of it? Negative 2 might even be too far away. So I would plug in negative 1.1. And all I need to know is, what is the sign? So if I plug in for x right here, a negative 1.1, 2 times negative 1.1 would be a negative. And on the bottom, negative 1.1 plus 1 would also be a negative. 
And if you divide, two negatives give you a positive. So I know that that one's going to go to positive infinity. And if you remember from our bell work, the graph on the left, as it approached negative 1, it did go up to positive infinity. Okay, now let's do this one algebraically. Let me make some space. Okay, now we're approaching negative 1 from the right. So again, we're approaching a vertical asymptote from the right side. And here's my vertical asymptote. From the right, it could still go up to infinity or it could go down to negative infinity. And to figure that out without knowing the graph, Okay, to figure that out without knowing this graph, sorry, so sloppy, I'm just going to plug in a number that's super close to negative 1, but to the right of it. Close to negative 1, but to the right of it, I'm going to plug in negative 0.9. And I don't need to know what it actually equals. I just need to know whether I'm going to get a positive or a negative value, because already it's one of these two answers. So if I plug in a negative here, the positive times a negative gives me a negative in the numerator. If I plug in a negative 0.9 for x here and add 1, that's going to be a positive value. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So I now know that this one goes to negative infinity. And if you put it all together, because this was the same as the bell work that we had on the previous slide, then as we approach that vertical asymptote from the left, it went to positive infinity. And as we approached it from the right, it went to negative infinity. And this is the only part we're actually looking at right now. I haven't really discussed this piece of it here, okay? So, if I ask you a limit at a vertical asymptote, then you need to know immediately that the answer is automatically infinity or negative infinity, okay? And to figure out which one, plug in a number super close to this number and figure out the sign. Now, don't go doing this method unless you're talking about a vertical asymptote. It only works with vertical asymptotes because as you approach a vertical asymptote, your graph automatically has to go up forever or down forever. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, this one. If you know what this graph looks like, and you should, then you can just visualize it graphically. But let's assume you don't know what the graph looks like, and I try to plug in 3. Well, if I plug in 3 over here, I get division by 0, and I can't fix it. So I know it's a vertical asymptote. So immediately, it's one of these two answers. Now, to figure out which one, to the left of 3, I'm going to plug in 2.9. If I plug in 2.9 for x, I get a positive over a negative, which is a negative. So my answer is negative infinity. And by the way, technically, if you get infinity or negative infinity, then you say the limit does not exist because infinity is not a number, but also sometimes they ask you to be more specific. Is it positive infinity or negative infinity? All right, now let's do the same thing for to the right of 3. To the right of 3, I would plug in 3.1. And if I plug in a 3.1 for x up here, if this is 3.1, then you're going to get a positive over a positive, which is a positive, so this one's positive infinity. Again, automatically, if you are approaching a vertical asymptote, your graph is automatically going to go to infinity or negative infinity as it approaches that asymptote. We're not talking about anywhere else, just at the vertical asymptote. Okay, so graphically, you should have known this graph has a vertical asymptote at 3, and it actually has a horizontal asymptote at 0. You may or not, may not remember that yet, and this is what that graph would have looked like. And the part of this question that we actually just found is from the right, it goes to positive infinity. From the left, it goes to negative infinity. And the reason you're able to plug in a number super close to 3 is because as you get super close, it's going to go way far down or way far up. And here's the actual graph so you can see it. Okay, one more like this. Okay, this one. Let's try it again. Again, there's a vertical asymptote at negative 2, and I'm asking about negative 2. So already I know my two possible answers are infinity or negative infinity. To the left of negative 2, I'll tr plug in negative 2.1. If I plug in a negative 2.1, well, it's not really matter 
going to matter what I plug in, this denominator is always positive because I squared it. So that's always a positive, which means no matter what, this answer is positive infinity, and it'll be positive infinity for both of them because it's not possible to get a negative when you're squaring something. All right, I hope you're hanging in there. If you want to take a break, now would be the time. By the way, there's the graph of that one. They go to positive infinity from both sides. If you want to take a break, now is probably a good time because we're going to move on to the next type of problem. Okay, now we're going to talk about horizontal asymptotes, although they are going to be in disguise a little bit, okay? We've already done this problem. We know it has a vertical asymptote at 3, but I, I graphed it for you, and it also has a horizontal asymptote at 0. So how does that show up? Okay, well, if a graph, as you go far to the right, if it tapers off to any number, as you go far to infinity, it tapers off, then it must have a horizontal asymptote. Same thing on the left, and this isn't this particular graph, but let's say over here to the left, as I go far left, maybe it tapers off also. Well, if I ask about the, the limit at infinity or at negative infinity, if I ask for those limits and I get a numeric answer, then that means it had a horizontal asymptote. Now, how do you find that out? without looking at the graph. And this one you learned a bit in Algebra 2. You probably did more of it in pre-calc, and we're going to approach it with another, uh, with, in another direction right now. Okay, I'm going to actually plug in this infinity. Now, technically, you can't plug in infinity because it's a number, but I'm going to just do it anyway. I'm plugging in an infinity right here. Okay, now infinity is that gigantic number that goes on forever and ever and ever. So do you think subtracting 3 from that infinity really makes much of a difference? Plus it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger anyway. So I think of this as just a big fat infinity because subtract 3 from gigantic number, who cares? Basically then I think of it like this. Okay, now I want you to think of this. It's really a limit. As this number on the bottom gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but this number on the top stays the same. What does the value of this get closer and closer to? Well, let me give you a hint. Let's say I had 1 over 10. No, even bigger, 1 over 100. 1 over 1,000. What are the values of these numbers getting closer and closer to? 1 over a million. This is super close to 0 you're getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Even if this was a seven on the top, seven tenths, seven over a hundred, seven over a thousand, seven over a million, if the top number stays the same and the bottom number gets infinitely large, then you're getting closer and closer and closer to zero, okay? So a number, any number over infinity, the value of that limit is zero. Okay, so this one's zero. What that means is that my graph, as I go to positive infinity, it's approaching zero. Now, I don't know until I put more of it together. I don't know if it's approaching it from the bottom or from the top, but on the right side, it is approaching a horizontal asymptote. Let's do the negative infinity now. If I do this the same and I plug in, even though you're technically not really allowed to, but we do anyway, plug in a negative infinity he here, negative infinity, huge or tiny number, far, far to the left, minus 3, whoop de freaking do it's still basically a negative infinity. Now, the fact that it's negative really doesn't matter because the top number stays the same. The bottom number gets infinitely, I'm going to say larger, but... It's really smaller because it's negative, but we get negative 10, okay? We can do negative 1 over negative 100, 1 over negative a million. Still, what is this overall value getting closer and closer and closer to? Zero. Now, graphically, because this one was negative, what it means is this one on the left, it's approaching zero from below it. 
and when it was positive, it actually is approaching zero from above it, but it doesn't matter. As long as you know that a constant, any constant, over infinity, that's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Now, that's a major concept. I want you to remember that. Now, if it was the other way around, let me summarize that, okay? So any number over infinity or negative infinity gets closer and closer to zero. It doesn't actually equal zero, but that's the concept of a limit, okay? But if the infinity was on the top, if I take infinity and I divide by seven, now it just gets to infinity slower. This still goes to infinity. Okay, this is a major deal. Infinity on the bottom means you're getting closer and closer to zero. Infinity, infinity on the top still means infinity, you're just getting there a little slower. All right, so this problem that we just did, we got zero for both of those. Here's the graph of it, just so you can see and put it all together. Okay, remember it had a vertical asymptote and it has a horizontal asymptote. Okay, as we approach infinity on the right, it approaches zero. And as we approach inf infinity, negative infinity, it's also approaching zero. Okay, so if you can remember, asking about limits at infinity and negative infinity, that's the same as saying, do you have a horizontal asymptote? All right, let's do a few more problems with this infinity and negative infinity. You may remember from Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc another weird rule for horizontal asymptotes, which at the time it probably felt like people were making stuff up. And that rule was when you compared the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Okay, I'm going to go to a different problem for a second to make it a, a clearer example. Here we go. So, this one. We had a rule for horizontal asymptotes. If the highest degree of the numerator and the highest degree of the denominator, okay, if you looked at degrees, if you have two polynomials, if the degree on top is less than the bottom, then there was a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If the two degrees were the same, like this, then you had a horizontal asymptote at the coefficients, y equals three-fifths. If the degree on top was more, like this, then there was no horizontal asymptote. Okay, and if you think about it, that would be similar to saying, like, let's say you had y equals just 2x squared plus 1. The degree on top is bigger because there is no degree on the bottom, and this is just a parabola. It doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. So those rules, if you remember that horizontal asymptotes are the same as asking about the limits at infinity and negative infinity, those rules still work when you're dealing with two polynomials, one on top of the other. But now let me show you how it also works the way I did it, where we kind of plug in infinity. I got a little bit of cheating to do, but hopefully you get used to it. Let me clear the screen. Okay, from the top, the easiest way that I know without memorizing. Think of infinity as such a large number that subtracting five doesn't matter. Subtracting one doesn't really matter, and the two x doesn't even really matter. What matters is the highest degree terms of the numerator and the denominator. They're the things that are going to affect this infinity the most. So when I'm dealing with limits at infinity or negative infinity, I cheat and grab out the two highest degree terms from the numerator and the denominator. Okay? I simplify that. Oops, this was a five. I simplify that. And now I visualize plugging in my infinity. Well, for this one, that means the infinity would go on the bottom. Infinity cubed, still infinity. Infinity times 5, still infinity. So I get 3 over infinity. And we remember, as the, as the denominator gets infinitely large and the numerator stays the same, this goes to 0. Those are the same rules that you learned in Algebra 2. When the degree on the top is less than the bottom, it means the bottom is growing faster and stronger, and that's why it goes to zero, because the bottom is going to infinity quicker than the top is.
Now, this problem, if it was negative infinity, it's going to be the same thing. We would still simplify it to this point, but then we would plug in negative infinity. But in the end, it doesn't matter. It still goes to zero. Okay, from the top, let's do it again. We're still dealing with the horizontal asymptotes, okay, because we're dealing with limits at infinity. This does have a vertical asymptote at negative 1, but I, that's not what I'm asking about. I'm not asking about what's happening at negative 1. So with infinity and only with infinity and negative infinity, I think to myself, self, this plus 1 really doesn't do much to an infinity. I cheat and pop out the highest degree terms. I simplify, and then I try to plug in my infinity. Well, there's nothing left to plug it into. I'm done. The limit as x approaches infinity is 2. Now, if you use your Algebra 2 rules, okay, using your Algebra 2 rules, the degree of the numerator is a 1, the degree in the denominator is a 1, and so there would be a horizontal asymptote at 2. Okay? This is going to give me the same answer because it still cancels to a 2 no matter what. Let's try another one. Here's the graph just to justify that. Okay, both to the right and to the left, you have a horizontal asymptote at 2. Okay, infinity. I'm going to plug in infinity for my x. Oops. Okay, plug in the infinity for my x. Add 2 to infinity, it's still infinity. Square it, it's still infinity. No matter what I plugged in there, you're going to get infinity and a number over infinity is zero. If I did the negative infinity, it's going to go to negative infinity, but then you square it and it turns it back into a positive infinity, but it doesn't matter, it's still zero. Here's the graph. Okay, we already did this one, I'm going to skip that. Okay, this one, hopefully you know by now what this answer should be. The degrees are the same. So it's going to be 3 fifths, but again, at infinity or negative infinity, I pop out the highest degree terms because infinity is going to affect these guys way stronger than any of these. So I pop out those lead terms and simplify and then plug in my infinity. Well, there's nothing to plug it into, so that's just 3 fifths regardless of whether it's positive or negative infinity. And here's the graph to justify that answer. All right, now we're going to do a couple trickier ones. Actually, no, I got one more easy one. All right, this one, if you remember your rules for Algebra 2, then if the degree on the top is bigger than the degree on the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. If there's no horizontal asymptote, then that means your graph is going to go up forever or down forever but you're going to get infinity or negative infinity, okay? But let's do it the way we were doing the others. At infinity, I take out the lead terms. I don't mean the front terms. I mean the ones that have the highest exponent. Simplify. And now plug in your infinity. Infinity squared is infinity times 3 is still infinity. So the infinity is on the top and infinity divided by a number is still infinity. So this one goes to infinity. What does that mean? My x coordinate is infinity and my y coordinate is infinity. All that means is as my graph goes far to the right, it also goes up. I don't know if it does it as a straight line. All I know is on the right side, it's going up, okay? If I take this negative infinity and plug it into the same simplified equation, you're still gonna get positive infinity. So on the left, my graph is also going up. What it's doing in the middle, I don't know. I only know the far ends. Here's the graph to justify that. It's a really weird graph. You wouldn't have predicted that at all. But as my graph goes far to the right, it is going up forever. As my graph goes far left, it is also going up forever. That's why both of these were positive infinity. Okay, you may want to take a break now because the next part is a little trickier. Okay, exponential growth. We can see by looking at this one that as x goes to positive infinity, my height 
goes, sorry, as x goes to positive infinity, my height also goes to infinity. But without the graph, if I plug in an infinity right here, then you're raising a number to infinity. So, yeah, that makes sense. Infinity. Okay. But what about this one? I'm going to plug in this negative infinity for my x. So you get 5 to the negative infinity. What the heck is that? Well, do you remember what 5 to the negative 2 is? And it is not negative 25. It's 1 over 5 to the positive 2. It's 1 over 25. It's a fraction. So if you get a negative exponent, rewrite it as a positive. This is 1 over 5 to the positive infinity. And 5 to infinity is still infinity. So this is 1 over infinity, which is 0. That is why this graph on the left, as we go to negative infinity, it has a horizontal asymptote of 0. Okay? So to summarize that one, if you get any number to negative infinity, you need to rewrite a negative exponent as a positive exponent. Okay? And then that just means you have an infinity on the bottom, which is 0. All right, now some trickery on this next one. I think this is the last one. Okay, so let's see what you can do. Try, oh, I have the graph sitting there for you, so that's kind of cheating. I'm giving you the answer. I can see that on the right, I can see that on the right, this is supposed to go to 8. I can see that. I can see that on the left, this is supposed to go to 0. So this answer is supposed to be 8, and this answer is supposed to be 0. But we need to get that without that pretty picture. Okay? So I should have left the picture off, but I didn't, and I'm not going to redo this lesson now. So without the pretty picture, try not to look at it. Let's plug in the infinity for the x way up here, and we would get 8 over 1 plus e to the negative x, if x is infinity, would be negative infinity. Okay? Now we just said negative infinity, we can't work with that. So we're going to leave the 8, going to leave the 1, just rewrite the e. e to negative infinity is 1 over e to the positive infinity. Now let's work with just that. e to the positive infinity is the same as infinity. So now, running out of space, I still have the 8 on the top, I still have the 1 plus, and this is 1 over e to infinity, which is infinity. Okay, what is 1 over infinity? The same as 0. And so we have 0 plus 1, or 1 on the bottom and an 8 on the top, and that's why this limit is 8. That's why there's a horizontal asymptote at 8. Okay, now let's try it again with this negative infinity. That one actually is a little bit easier. Okay, this time we're plugging in negative infinity for my x, so we get 8 over 1 plus e to the negative negative infinity, which means it's really a positive infinity. So we have 8 over 1 plus e to the positive infinity. e to infinity is infinity. And then infinity plus 1 is still infinity. So we have 8 over infinity, which is 0. When I say it is 0, I'm kind of lying because really these are all limits. It's approaching 0. Hope you're hanging in there. Kind of a long lesson. Sorry it's taking me so long. But yesterday was quick. All right, you try these last two on your own. Okay, just think of this as one problem. Oops, sorry, I keep doing that. Think of this as one problem and then subtract two at the end. You got this. Hit pause and try this last problem. Okay, let's see how you did. First one, plugging in positive infinity. e to infinity is just infinity. Infinity plus one is still infinity. So I have six over infinity. And then six over infinity is zero. And 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So this limit is negative 2. How'd you do? Okay. Next one. Okay, the next one, plugging in negative infinity. 
The key for that is just make sure you rewrite this term within the bigger fraction. Rewrite that as a positive infinity. That's going to be 1 over e to the positive infinity. And then e to infinity is infinity. 1 over infinity is 0. And 0 plus 1 is 1. So I have 6 over 1, which is 6 minus 2. So this one should have been 4. So on the right side, there's a horizontal asymptote at negative 2. And on the left side, there's a horizontal asymptote at 4. Negative 2 and 4. Here's the graph. On the right side, my graph goes to negative 2. And on the left side, my graph goes to 4. Hope you did well. That one wasn't so easy. Sorry it took me so long to explain. 30 minutes, that's a long video. Good luck with your assignment. I'm going to skip this one. Good luck. See you next time.